Yeah. All right, welcome everybody. It's uh, Monday the 18th. 18th. Yeah, I had to think about that for a second. Uh, second meeting of the month, Miami Township Board of Trustees. Um, two trustees, Fire Chief, Road Administrator, Chris Glosser. We're all here, ready to go. Uh, entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of March 4th, 2008. I so move. Alistair moves. I will second any further discussion regarding those minutes. I saw no changes of them. They look just fine. Hearing no further discussion, may we vote, please? Mr. Hoster? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. I take a motion to approve payment of bills of $45,988.89. Broken down general fund, $4,634.58. Fire fund, $24,280.69. Cemetery fund four thousand one hundred fourteen dollars and eighty cents. EMS billing uh, six thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars and forty-two cents. Road and bridge four thousand eight hundred eighty-eight dollars and sixty-four cents. And capital project one thousand five hundred forty-four dollars and seventy-six cents. Is there a motion? I so move. Is there a second? Um, second. All right. <laughs> the discussion regarding payment those accounts. Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. All right. We have a new addition to the board. <laughs> <laughs> a most recent addition to the board. Well, that's good. All right. We'll let him get organized as we go through correspondence and then mm -hmm. move along to normal stuff. So, we received um, an, an email regarding starting our 501c3 and that refers to the uh, establishment of the local uh, CDC, and we'll probably talk about that a little bit further in old news. Uh, OTA legislative alert from March 15th. Um, uh, 2019 CareWorks Comp uh, Risk Management Cost Control Seminar Announcement and a CareWorks Comp New Claim Notification Department of Commerce and Control Notice, which does apply, but doesn't apply to us because we have no big establishments in uh, the township. Um, Green County District Advisory Council meeting minutes for, for 2018. Uh, MSA uh, 3-7 meeting minutes. Um, that's actually the phone. Seven? That's, yeah, but that's the phone, phone meeting. So conference call. Conference call. You um, that? Yes, please, because we didn't have a special meeting, so it might be a little confusing. Okay. Sure. A uh, letter from Bath Township resident about mutual aid, uh, Otarma's quarterly newsletter, the Yellow Springs Tree Committee uh, newsletter 2019, uh, MDRPC's March 7th uh, meeting materials and executive director's update newsletter, and the fund status, revenue status, and appropriation status for March 18th. That would be today. Is there any, are there any further correspondences in or out? Hearing none, we will move along. We will move along to the fire department. Alrighty. <coughs> Since the last board meeting, we've had 31 EMS incidents, uh, 11 fire incidents, and has been three fire safety activities. 31 sounds like a pretty good number. It's a good clip. Yeah, we've been moving along pretty well. Um, uh, the Bath Township tanker has an air leak. <laughs> uh, it's awaiting parts and uh, they should be in this week. They will get them in and then it should be in service next week. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, we had uh, one member had a workers' compensation claim last week. Well, it's ongoing. But he should be cleared to return to full duty by uh, Wednesday as a follow up with occupational health. So he injured his finger. Oh, on the uh, good side, <clears throat> one of our crews early Sunday morning transported a resident from Cornerstone Drive in Bath Township uh, who was complaining of chest pains to Soin, uh, like 3.30 in the morning, uh, while en route to the uh, hospital patient in cardiac arrest. The crew started CPR, defibrillated him once, and as Joe was trying to uh, place the tube down his throat to help him breathe, he woke up. So, uh, which is not a very common outcome. Uh, so. Uh, the patient was admitted, uh, had an emergency uh, heart cath at Soin that morning, was admitted to their ICU, and was moved to a regular uh, room 
today. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they are expecting to make a full recovery, which uh, is outstanding for him. Um, and the crew did an amazing job because that's not, unfortunately, the way it usually works. So they did a really good job, um, and we're going to set up a time to recognize them. I'll be giving them a commendation. I care Health Network also wants to recognize them because it's a program they do as well when these things happen. So, uh, so there's uh, Joe Panuto, Ryan Evans, Nick Miller Jacobson, Ryan Schroeder, and then I just found out also TJ Fries and Casey Brewer were all on the call. So. Who's the last person? Kate. Casey Brewer. Casey Brewer. Casey Brewer. How in the world did you get everybody up at? <laughs> they were all here, honestly. What time was it? Three something in the morning. I mean, well, Joe and Ryan were on duty. Yeah. Um, and Ryan Schroeder was here because he wasn't doing so he was hanging out. Casey was here because he was where Casey was. TJ was here. It was just a packed night. <laughs> and then Nick came from home. <laughs> so. Wow. So, yeah, and they were out the door in two and a half minutes. So. You, you can't say we don't have a good... Response. Yeah, that night we were packed. That one worked out pretty well. Okay. So, um, oh, and good for them. Yeah, well, it was very nice. Yeah, very nice to hear. And it was nice to hear back from Christy of Soren so quickly. Mm -hmm. That it was uh, it was good news because oftentimes, unfortunately, it's not. Yeah. So. Um, I did want to point out uh, something. You in the correspondence there was the letter from a Bath Township resident uh, mm -hmm. regarding mutual aid, mm -hmm. uh, which was also brought up at a Bath Township meeting recently which claimed that in the month of January, uh, when we had second or overlapping EMS calls, so two coming in pretty much at the same time, 62% uh, of the time, those calls went to mutual aid. Uh, we had to call someone to take care of the call for us. Um, one of the funny things about data um, is that, one of, one of the things I've learned uh, is that you can cherry pick and make things sound however you want it to sound. Um, the reality, however, number one, we're a small department and we may not always be able to handle second calls. How many second calls were there in January? We had seven. Seven, seven overlapping calls uh -huh. during January. Um, well, one principle in statistics is you don't use percentages when you're talking about less than 100. Mm -hmm. You use fractions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, one principle is also you have to give supporting data, uh, <laughs> which I did not. So uh, two of those. On January 7th, January 12th, we handled both medics got out, handled them without a problem. But then when you start looking, um, some of these, you know, for again a small department, basically it's maybe 43% of the time we had to call mutual aid if I'm being really generous. But 43 would mean how many out of how many? That would be three out of seven. Three times out of seven we had to call mutual aid. Um, I'm assuming one of them that they are, they're, they're counting, because this is through a public records request that I had to provide this data. Um, January 12th, Houston was called for a second call, was met on scene by me, I was the last man standing. Uh, we were already out on a motor vehicle crash with an engine and an ambulance and six people out there, so that was pretty much everyone we had. Um, on the 20th, <coughs> Houston was requested for a third medic call. Um, I'm sorry, a third call, met on scene again by me. Uh, we were on a medic call with two people and a hazmat incident with the engine with two people at the same time, two different calls going on. And then on the 30th, he said it was requested for a second call, which was met on scene by me um, and a firefighter. Um, he said uh, we, were already a, we were already on another call at that, at that time. Mm -hmm. so. so there's really only three, because another one they're counting. Um, Houston was called for a second call at Friends Care while we were, we were actually at Friends. Mm -hmm taking one patient out, and they said, oh, hey, we're calling you again because we have another patient. Um, it was right at shift change around 7 p.m. So we just said, well, no one's going to show, so we called Houston, and then Jeremy was coming on duty that night, so he brought the second ambulance. Uh, but Houston got there at the same time, and I felt bad that we got out of bed. Well, not out of bed, but out of, uh, out of their home, mm -hmm. and asked if you guys want to take it, go right ahead. So we could have taken it, but we let him do it. So. So yeah, I mean, being generous, it's three out of seven times we uh, we gave it to mutual aid. But uh, you know, of those three, or on those three calls, was the response time uh, appropriate to the to the call, and uh, did they have um, ALS or BLS or whatever whatever mm -hmm. was necessary? I mean, did they have? Oh yeah, correct. Yeah, the initial the initial ambulance you know call was handled without a problem uh, by us with. ALS no, the, the mutual aid call. Mutual aid calls. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, that Houston got there relatively quickly. Uh -huh. um, I think all the calls were actually during their staff times at Houston, because they staffed from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., mm -hmm. except for that one at Friends, which was at 7 o'clock. Um, so, I mean, they got there relatively <coughs> quickly, but someone was on the scene within minutes to do me. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, start care and wait for them, so. Um, were they all removals? They were all transports, yeah. So what was the complaint? Um, it was a complaint geared towards you gentlemen, I believe, mm -hmm. <laughs> questioning why you thought it was a good idea to take on a contract for the territory when we can't even handle our second call. So. <laughs> well, they were alleging that it's about 62%. 62, and I, you know. Of those calls. I think were. that's that's a stretch. Mm -hmm. Certainly, that's a stretch. Um, well, you make the point regardless of, you know, if there's one duplicate. So they're saying if we were to, we should we should have the ability to do two calls before we take on another space. Another Apparently, yeah. Territory. Yeah. And I mean, there are people who were upset at a Bath Township meeting. Um, there was a crash at 235 in Byron Road on a Saturday. I think it was the second of March. During the daytime, and our medic crew was transporting a patient from Friends Care to. The hospital when the call came in. Um, so, because our medic was already on a call, our crash response is two ambulances and a fire engine. So, we pulled up our second ambulance, Enan, and our fire engine. So, when our sent, when dispatch, our dispatcher called Houston, the Houston dispatcher who dispatches both Enan and Houston, mm -hmm. our dispatcher didn't tell them who we wanted. So she just assumed that Ian, oh, my township always asks for Houston. Mm -hmm. And St. Houston, which took 20 minutes for them to get there, it's kind of a, a haul. Mm -hmm. um, it turned out, luckily, when the patient got herself out of the car, she was arrested later uh, at the scene for being DUI. Um, so we made that change. I've talked to Mindy about you know, making sure the dispatchers ask for the right people, and we've made changes to the run cards for that part of that township to uh, kind of realign and make sure that people get there faster going. Our ambulance crew actually upgraded their transport, went lights and sirens to green with a patient, dropped her off really quickly, and came back to the call. So, um, and I actually got to work in Houston this morning. So, you know, there's some people who are just upset that we're covering them. You know, I don't think they're going to win everybody over. But uh, so far, you know, we, neither I or the Bath Township Board, have received any complaints from people we've actually had to mm -hmm. care for. So, which is really the measure. The service that we provide. I thought we were restructuring our personnel with the uh, additional financial assistance of Bath Township to hopefully get to the point where we will be able to uh, accommodate two ambulances yes. at all times. Yeah, that is, I mean, that's the goal. And on a couple of these, we had enough people for that. But if they were already out in the fire engine on the other call, you know, they can't come back and take the units. Yeah. You know, we're not there yet because trying to find people to, to work is really difficult at this point. Um, just because everyone's looking for part time staff at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but we're still, we're still plugging along. <laughs> Got another guy starting uh, with April 1st. So. Well, for, for example, on the uh, commendation call, <coughs> of the six people you had, mm -hmm. I mean, were all six needed for that transport? No, and two didn't transport, two stayed back. After they assisted, assisted on the scene, so. But there was obviously no one here at the station during that call. Correct. So if another call had come in, right, then it would have gone mutually. Mm -hmm. uh, which you know is a standard procedure even for a, I don't know, four station, full time fire department. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know the, the I'm not sure. I mean that, I think the the myth that some people follow is that. Everyone's available all the time. It's just not the way it works. You know, take the fire department calls mutually from Beaver Heights and Riverside all the time. And, you know, unless you're size of New York City, there are going to be times where you're just not able to fill every call request because it's just the way it is. You know, because staffing is what it is, and calls come in when they do. And, uh, you know, our goal here is to be able to make sure, obviously, we handle all the first calls and as many of the second calls as we can, uh, and we seem to be doing. 
it will only get better as we hopefully move towards the optimal staffing. So how much short are we of the optimal staffing? We're still significantly short. I mean, we're still down one 24-hour position and uh, five, five or six 12-hour uh, positions. And then that's what we budgeted for. Yeah, that's what's budgeted for. But even if they were full, fully staffed, everyone would go to a, an, an initial call. It depends on what the dispatch calls for. Uh, I mean, for instance, the one with accommodation, um, since it came in as a chest pain, the dispatchers uh, made that a more serious call, a major medical response. So it got the response of both the, the ambulance and the, uh, the rescue truck to assist. Most of the calls are just an ambulance only, so usually it's just a two-person crew that goes on the ambulance. But if there's six people here, mm -hmm. then then four people stay back. In theory, yeah. If there's a, just a regular run-of-the-mill ambulance. Okay, I, I was I, I guess I just misunderstood that, saying you know, everybody everyone would jump in and go. Yeah, on, no, on every call. No, if they are here. Right. We don't. I'm not saying bring them in from outside. Right. But no, if they're here. You know, the guys, all three shift leads, Nate, Joe, and Alex, are very good about that. But, you know, we send the people who need to go, not everybody. Now, with the, with the, the run where you receive the accommodation, mm -hmm. um, did four people go on that one? Four ended up transporting. Okay. Uh, a driver and then three in the back. Okay, because that's, that's what I understood. Yeah. Was that there were six people and yeah. that uh, two assistants stayed behind. Yeah. Okay. And so a moment ago you said we're uh, short of our goal, one full time and five part time. Uh, well, it's one. They're, both, they're all part time positions, but okay. one is a twenty four hour position every six days, and the other is twelve hour positions every six days. They're in Canada, so I guess they just got confused by what tax is in. No, go back. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy Canadians, you know. And then, oh, last but not least, just a reminder, I'll be gone tomorrow through next Wednesday. Okay, there you go. Stay off those max eights. <laughs> <laughs> Different ground. What? They're all ground. I'm going to ball up. I'm on a yeah. Well, yeah, okay, well, hmm? was, in the United States, they are. He was flying Wow Airlines. Say the gear or somebody. <laughs> Lit the wind. Yeah, <laughs> that's a real one. <laughs> okay, that's it. All right, so thank you. Is he going to try to burn one? Oh, yeah, good thinking. Depending on weather and timing, um, we're going to try and get some burning done tomorrow. Uh, more steam, small prairie, and then. Natural Thank you, natural prairie. <laughs> I only could think of some death ground, but that's the whole place. So um, I, I bought new tubs, three, three more anyway. So there it is. Yeah. So yeah, they're trying to get them tomorrow night um, during training, and if not, then we'll just schedule it on mm -hmm. the next couple weeks. Like, people are trying to bring, but uh, why not look at more? Now? Hopefully by tomorrow. Yeah. I think it will be tomorrow. It should be, be another day, like today. yeah. As long as it's like today, and because um, we originally yeah. scheduled more speed for today, but. Because of the snow and the rain yesterday, we put it off. So as long as it's not too windy, there's enough people showing. Mm -hmm. yeah. All the fun factors. Right. But mm -hmm. Yeah, Morris Bean looked like it was good to go, and it's still brown. I assume the natural barrier. Mm -hmm. there is yeah, it would burn. Okay. Fantastic. So yeah, they should get that done. If not, I'm going to schedule the SAD. So. Okay, great. All right. Anything else? Anything else? Uh, no. Um, I just wanted to go over where we are. Oh, right, yeah, the fire station. The fire station. Uh, we had a, um, another conference call last Wednesday, and it was just a, 
um, you know, it's a continuation of you know, things, but, um, but and a, a distributed, I think everybody's seen the distribution of the results of it, the minutes from it, and the, uh, uh, the new uh, uh, direction of the construction manager and the potential um, request for qualifications that will go out for that. Uh, there's another call scheduled for Wednesday. I've decided to go down to Cincinnati to be at MSA for that. Uh, I just feel like yeah, it's necessary to sit on these people a little bit more than you know, in the past. Plus, I want to review some data that hopefully they have for um, what the bid uh, estimates called out and what the general contractors that over the past three bids, you know, have, have bid portions of the package and see you know, where the you know, where they line up and where they don't. Uh, there's also some other strategy questions that I have to see whether it's worth pursuing uh, and get into all these potential things that you know probably aren't going to uh, pan out. But so anyway, that's going to happen. So that's where we are for that. Um, anything? Uh, well, I have two questions. One is, uh, and maybe you're clear, but I'm not, as to this notion of shifting towards uh, where we, we can affect, act as our own contractor. No. That hasn't happened. No. Um, we're going, we would potentially contract with somebody who would be acting as our contractor. But that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. So that, how far are we on that? Um, still in the discussion stage. Mm -hmm. um, the, one of the things is, we're not sure where that would fall financially. And MSA has uh, two uh, construction manager organizations that they're close enough, they feel close enough with that they want to get some preliminary numbers from them to see whether this is a logical direction to take. Because mm -hmm. if they talk to them and those people say, well, you know, based on what we've seen, this is a Five point seven five million dollar job, mm -hmm. and so there's, you know, there's there's no sense going down that road until we hit that old value engineering button, you know, and start well, knocking off sleeping quarters and has, 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 trusty, trusty has there been and <laughs> one of the variables is the groundwork. Um, it might turn out to be less expensive than some of the estimates. If we just did it and then bid the whole job mm -hmm. after, by not we doing it, but contracted for just that piece. Mm -hmm. So we've got the ground compacted to, to specifications and that variable would be eliminated. Um, that was brought up, it was batted around a little bit. Uh, there wasn't a, there really wasn't a legitimately strong 100% reason to do it as opposed to not doing it. There was, well, if you do it, then, <coughs> then you know, the plan is, the, the, the footprint is set and you can't, you know, you can't change it if you had to down the road. You, know, you could shrink it, but you couldn't. Well, no, you really couldn't shrink it because what you're doing is you're, is you're, you're putting these piers in places where uh, you know, maybe they could, I, obviously I don't know. Okay, I, I get your point. And, and then the other one, point. Th that one and, 
you know, if, if a contractor comes in and the, the groundwork's already done, the building's put down there, then it starts to crack or whatever. Sport responsibility who's, yeah, then who's liable. Yeah. Who's liable. You know, the GOPR guys go, well, I don't know what kind of equipment they ran over our, our mm -hmm. GOPRs putting in the, the pad and, you know, back and forth that way too. So, um, I know what you're saying that is a, a, a little bit of a potential savings also is a little bit of a risk. I mean, that, what was that estimated at? Do you remember 100, 150 for that, 150,000 for that? So if it comes in, I mean, the most recent one, so most re so if you know if they did it and it saved us fifty, that is fifty, but was it worth the fifty? I, don't know. I mean, it's not going to save us a hundred. It's not going to save us you know substantial in the, in the smaller amounts. I can run that by them again just to see how strong. How you strong say it's it. not going to be in the hundreds. Well, they're not going to if it's a. If it's estimated to cost 150, it's not going to save us 100. Right. Okay. So I, I thought that it was done. I thought there were some some subcontract bids that were much higher. Well, but the the first time mm -hmm. when we when we went down there, the between the first and the second bid, it was all over the map. I mean, they originally estimated at seventy-five thousand, and then they thought it was going to be seven hundred thousand. Right. And then they didn't know who was doing it, and that was a. And that's when we didn't put in peers as an option. Right. That was that was trucking out eight hundred thousand cubic yards of dirt and then bringing it all. And there's still some of that, but but the geo peers isn't supposedly a less expensive way to go, and it's all it's you know it's, it was an engineered it was an engineered. Uh, Option. It wasn't just well. Let's just try this. You know, Bowser mm -hmm. Bowser Mortar, the people that we contracted with to to do the site work or the site engineering, I guess it were. You know, they had that all uh, engineered and the compaction rate and what was necessary and how many peers and where they had to go. I don't know if you've seen those, but there's you know there's there's a big there's a big booklet of, of the work for that. Um, and you know, it does have to it does have to be inspected. Um, uh, when it's finished and all, but Bowser Moore is not going to guarantee it if somebody else does it, and the other contractor is not going to guarantee it if they don't do it. And so, I don't know. Okay. And the other question, uh, you know, I wasn't part of the original planning. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't, well, I, I did campaign for the levy, but I uh, wasn't part of the levy proposal. Uh, and, but I noted that Ashley from USDA brought up in that call, again, the engineered steel building. And you dismissed that saying, the trustees are committed to uh, a building whose appearance will fit into this neighborhood. Or you, you, not exactly your words. Mm -hmm. but, um, and I just think we should acknowledge that Physically, there could be a fire station of a different, uh, you know, the floor plan would be the same, but the, the structure assumptions would be, and the appearance would be different, but dramatically cheaper. Well, everything's on the table, but, you know, when you, when you're, when you're going down that road, you want to stay as close to what the, what the uh, voting public you know, voted for. So I don't think that would be the very first thing that we would uh, uh, decide that, okay, well, we'll just go ahead and change the whole cladding to corrugated metal to save us the money and you know, yeah, keep the flight monitors or yeah. whatever. Yes, sir? My observation is that we don't know if it would be dramatically cheaper with the keyword being dramatic. Um, I don't know if it, it would be any cheaper. I think, it, you know, theoretically, if, if we went with a, whatever they call it, pre-engineered steel structure, mm -hmm. similar to what Houston has, mm -hmm. and the price savings, as Ashley points out on a regular basis, would be substantial. Um, but you also <coughs> use building life 
substantially what we found from talking to other people who've done that. Um, and as I pointed out, I think I actually found that, but, um, <laughs> well, tough luck. Um, you know, we campaigned on something, people voted for something, and I mean, yeah, if, we, if it boils down to it, you got to do it, you got to do it, but I'm sure the neighbors who are already not happy about an apartment building going in right. would be really happy about a garage. Really um, especially since we, I mean, talking points included, we promise you this will be nice. <laughs> no. It's a building that will last 50 plus years. So, Did we talk about this on the conference call? Well, we must have, but there's, there's some discussion about potentially saving money by doing some pre-engineered structural work for the interior. Right. You know, the walls and the have them done off site and then brought in and placed. You know. Yeah, there was after the that was on the last envelope. conference call they said I think that came up when they were talking to one of the contractors. Mm -hmm. the yeah, that's right. or one yeah. of those who said, Oh, you could definitely still have a really nice looking building with pre engineer certain portions, mm -hmm. even in concrete. Mm -hmm. It sounded like not just metal, but you could do it like the bay. Yeah. And then everything else would be the stick, whatever is still, but that would save you a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. And then you can clad it however you want it to clad it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think the important thing is whatever we do is, I mean, if it ends up with some pre engineering, it should, we want to make sure it's steel and not sticks. Because yeah. I've seen what's happening with like a four year old facility in the next county that was built that way. By yeah. sticks, you mean wood? wood. They already have like rotting going on in the bays. You know, they were pretty clear whether that's like it was Turner or one of those. The other, those two contractors they kept messing up talking about. Mm -hmm. um, there's, those are G, those were, those were construction managers. Right, Turner. Yeah, Turner and yeah, I can't remember. Um, but they could, uh, they thought that you could save money by doing that and still make it look nice. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know who the other companies, but Turner's a big, big company. I guess. Yeah, dealt with them before and different things. So. Okay, so we'll see what happens, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Anything else about the new firehouse? Okay, we'll move along. Uh, thank you, Chief. Thank you. That's safe trip. Thank you very much. I hope the surgery comes out well. I hope so too. When is the surgery Yes, yeah, no, no, I can't say. Uh, Thursday. Oh, Thursday. Thursday. But, no, no. Um, I got a second couple emails, so if you need me to just yell. Okay. Uh, Screen. Daniel, the floor is yours. Okay. Well, since our last meeting, we've had a burial in ashes. We're going to have another one this Saturday down here at Twin Force. Wait, the, the burial in ashes were in Clinton? Yep, they were in Glen Force. Okay. And we'll have another Saturday in Glen Force. Brandon will take care of that. Brandon will? He was off last week because he had family things. Mm -hmm. So we can have this one if you want. That's not sure. It's full or? It's ashes. Mm -hmm. That might build break. Mm -hmm. Some break. Mm -hmm. uh, your man Roger was in there. Because I believe. <laughs> That's good. Is it October again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I had to meet with the dogs down there. Actually, right after I talked to you, they called one no placement where the stones were. And he was there. So I thought he was going to try to put some leaves today. So I knew he'd get there. It's a matter of time. That doesn't solve the issue that there's been leaves since since October. Yeah, pretty much he couldn't get in there. Okay. But there were, there were some days I think he could. Yeah, yeah. well, Catholic Cemetery doesn't have yeah, for some reason. Haven't seen a leaf there? For some reason. Oh. Yeah. But anyway. He's... Does he serve that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a regular. <laughs> All right, well, now my blood pressure is high enough. It should be a little lower if he's in there doing something. And I got some graves to top off sometime this week. Mm -hmm. If the weather holds, we should be able to get some dirt and get in there and top off. Mm -hmm. About six up here. Yeah. A couple of questions. It's on the list for the And uh, that's about it for that. Okay. Anything? Um, um, 
your uh, memory like a steel trap in the natural burial, right offhand, can you think of anybody who's in 133 and 156? 156 is, is that the, the 19 year old dude? 156, that's that close to the curve down by the woods. On the south side, 156 would come around. Get 160 here, that was sold. 159 sold. 156. It's making yes. me nervous that there is no uh, record. The young gentleman that was 19. That yeah, came, right. That's where he was. I can't think of the name. It's, it should be recorded. It should be. A, it's the one where, where uh, Near showed up with a tent because they wanted to set up a sort of acting about him. But you know it's 156? It's 156. Okay. Or is it recorded differently? It it's, it's, doesn't have a name on it. It says it's, it says it's occupied. But I don't know I'll get that. I'll, I'll find that out because it was a young gentleman. I don't think. I'll find out. I know I wrote it down. I'm for sure I recorded it. Well, I'm not recorded it. It wasn't on one of my time sheets. I don't, wouldn't know the date. I mean, I'd have to. I mean, I could. I was just, if I have to, I'll go through back to them all. Was it seventeen? Was it seventeen? Oh, way back then. Way back. I'll, I'll just read. I'll check that out. And one thirty-three is no one, or, or is a one thirty-three is that Neil Dawson, and one thirty-two is is Deanna. Right. She bought one thirty-two. Neil Dawson is in one thirty-two. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's stone, actually they have stones. They're sitting there by the entrance. She's already bought stone right. markers. Mm -hmm. They're sitting there by the entrance. I need to take them back and place them. I'll do that. Not till after the park. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Once it's done, I'll place them. So. Oh yeah, there. There's a young gentleman. You will be, in a week, you'll be computer active for searching records. I heard something about that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Cool. Maybe you need it. Uh -huh. If it works out the way I want it to, you'll be able to just just do one click with your with your mouse on the screen and it will and it will come up and then there'll be a box that says search. And you put in Put in rainforest, natural, whatever you put in, all well, that will be for who would who would own a grave. You put in okay. yeah. Silliman and all the Silliman who own owns like you do here now when you look something up for it. Yeah, but it's a different it's gonna be a different method. But it will be easier to do. You won't have to go you won't have to enter passwords or you won't have to hook into this computer, uh, any of that. It was what I was trying to get when I was up there last, I guess mm -hmm. it was Friday. I was trying to get that old computer to load that information out, but yeah, it just wouldn't do it. wouldn't do it by the time we got there. Um, uh, and then, as we talked about, if you look, if you needed burials, you would just look on, on the website, you know, on the burial search. See who's there. Yeah. You know, if you were looking for Mrs. Duncan, mm -hmm. you know, see where she's buried. It'll okay. come up on the website and you'll have, you'll have access to that. So okay, cool. It should be just, just about as easy as we can make it. Okay. Well, you, you, you may have a quick run through once it's all there. We can. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, anything else for cemetery purposes this evening? Uh, Doc? Yeah, oh, Mark? Yeah. Well, what's the, what's the road? Department. Oh, well, we got a couple of potholes. Couple? <laughs> you fill them one day and it show up the next. Amazing. So I'm getting some more. I, I had to start to do that today, but we got sidetracked on another thing. So you know, as soon as we get here. Okay, you want to tell us about your sidetrack? I went and looked at a bobcat today. The phone call was that they had one in our price range. Mm -hmm. And pretty much everything we wanted. We had to sacrifice something, but 
you know, talking to them, it's not much of a sacrifice. It's more beneficial for us. You don't get Instead of having the vertical, right? because there's, he said there's too much pressure on there, more pivot points. So when you're pushing or something, he said it is beneficial, but it has its downfalls. And I've never had anybody tell me that before. Mm -hmm. you know, they do it pretty good with me today. Yeah. I'm not following. Well, I, would, I was curious to get a vertical lift, mm -hmm. which our Bobcat's a radius lift, so it comes back over you because they're fixed pivot points. On a vertical, it comes up because these pivot pull forward as it comes up. Well, there's more pivot points, it <coughs> cause more mm -hmm. damage. You know, pins can wear out quicker. But this gentleman has one that's this radius lift like ours, but it does have a leveling unit on it. So when you lift the bucket, it'll go up level now. You know how you have to do that as you're... Yeah, I'll it'll do it for that. you. This <laughs> Don't do it too many times, you yeah. all that salt poured out Dump it all back on the top of you. But this has a self lever on You just push the bucket in. So that's an awesome thing. Mm -hmm. It's a nice machine. It's a 2018 with yeah. 200 hours on it. Which is not very big. Not very many. Yeah, yeah. According to the others, were 1,100 and 900 hours mm -hmm. on the yeah. other two. So how much is it? He's at 32, but he's given us eight for our trade-in, for what we're trading in. So it takes us down to 24.9. Yeah, which is exactly which where is we want to be. Where you want to be. Now, the only thing we, we we need the combination bucket, which won't come with this. That would be an addition or whatever. I don't know the price that yet. But we are getting a straight bucket, which is which we wouldn't have got through him. We would have had to purchase it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's, we already authorized this. He's going for the not, not specifically. Yet. Okay. He's going. He's going to find us a combo bucket. I said if he's a used one, that's okay as long as it's in good shape. But he's going to try to get us a new one because mm -hmm. it, it it machines wider. So we're only going to keep our forks in the blade mm -hmm. because they're wider. Mm -hmm. But then we'll get rid of everything else. And the combination bucket would be enough. But he's throwing a, a straight bucket for free, basically. Free. Well, you know <laughs> what I mean. We wouldn't have got that through the other bomb. Right. So and he'll it'll be serviced, they'll send it to Troy and it'll be fully serviced and checked out. And it probably still has somewhat of a warranty on it. Seems the original different. manufacturer that mm -hmm. goes to the you know, to the equipment seller. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is this a piece of equipment that that you would be willing to pull the uh, trigger on tonight? Sure. Is there a, uh, a motion to that effect? I don't think there's a motion. I assume what you mean is to purchase this. Correct. Not pull the trigger. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah, that's, that's, that's a kill. I'll second the motion okay. to purchase this. Okay. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. And this will be all right for the combination <laughs> bucket purchase too uh -huh. on top of it? Yeah. Okay, great. So, Margaret. You want that for the particulars of the financing or whatever you well, want to Well, I'll just wait till they present an invoice and then I'll cut a check. Right. Well, I meant for the motion. Oh, sure. Do we need to contact him and get something else or just contact him and say, hey, it's a go whenever? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> just, you know, do it. Okay. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Yes, thank you very much. Do we now we all with? have a toy. <laughs> we do? Well, I like the idea that it's only got 200 hours on it. 400. 400. But, but still, it's in, you know. 400 hours? I can't believe the thing's got 400 hours on it. <laughs> It'll run, you know, the attachments. I talked to you about that. It'll run everything we would need to run. Mm -hmm. so. It's a pretty nice machine. So, if you uh I don't change my vote, but I had also heard 200. Yeah, I, I wrote down 400. I wrote down 400. It says two, but it's 400 hours. The fiscal officer wrote 400, so that's what it is. I said right next to my house. Mark and I, I just that. have different ears. Yeah. Cheap yeah. ears. How much of your equipment have you serviced? That lower. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's done. So. Is it you could have moved it. I noticed you were out there. You could have moved it out. You know, that's right. Did the E35 need to be serviced? It will be. Uh -huh. it will be. I did not get the orders for that, but it, I will. I can grab out of it. And you, haven't, it. you haven't changed the oil in the truck yet, I've noticed. <laughs> At least, unless you... Baby, baby step. Yeah, <laughs> right, a baby step. <laughs> now, I'll take care of that, too.
It's 24 hours in a day, as somebody used yeah. to say. Maybe, yeah. maybe Brandon and his dad will come down and do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a weekend. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Yeah, I'll get it finished. I get such a small list. When's Connor's kind of spring break? Next week. Is it? Mm -hmm. Need him? Um, Could I use him? Sure. Um, Just a couple, couple days, maybe? I, I'd like to get some more of those markers out of the cemetery before okay. Roger starts mowing, because then, because you know, I put the I put the orange flags in the holes where I take the markers out. Yeah, and I've always worried that you know he's just going to run over them, you know, and then they'll be gone. Then I won't know where to put them back. But uh, if we can knock those out, sure. you know, another fifty of them, and if Connor could help me or or, sure. or do yeah, it, yeah, he's out. I could get a guy in a couple of days. Work mm -hmm. right. in our house. Okay, so let's sure. plan on doing that for a while. Sure. Okay. He'll he'll be okay with it. Okay. That's mm -hmm. the veteran markers. Mm-hmm. I, mm -hmm. I concluded that. Mm -hmm. Okay. The senior foundry generously offered to do more. Really? Mm-hmm. That's what I think they can remember. I didn't either. No, I said. Yeah. Okay. Because it pays to know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even ask for it. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to get that ditch from that on can on can of this week. Needs to be done back in water up in the water. Weather holds it. I could do it today. Yeah, I saw that. That'd be good if you could get that. Yeah, that's that's on my list for this week, so I'll see what I can do. And Brandon was off today, he had a dentist appointment. So probably work the rest of the week. Is he making progress on that? Yeah. Good. Today should be the day, I hope. Yeah. Great. Good for him. And that's all I have. All right. Anything else for the road man? No, wait a minute. Road, road administrator. administrator. <laughs> <laughs> Slipping into my old, old ways. Hearing none, maybe we move along to the fist box. Yes, yeah. we may. Um, okay, so... Um, it's time to adopt our permanent appropriations, but I wanted to, um, let, oh, okay. I pull a muscle in there, so I want to sideways. Um, <clears throat> I had to do a little tweaking, partially due to the fact that there were some appropriations that we, and it's generally, the, it's generally in the general fund, but we, Generally, they are. Yes, and so um, you know we already spent some monies in the general fund, and the appropriations that we were looking at um, weren't enough. Uh, so. Well, um, yeah, because they were reviewed in in, in January or right, February. Right, right. You know, then we we paid for the, our property insurance and uh -huh. uh, just a little bit of this and that. So, um, and, you know, in all fairness, I wanted to let you know what what I did do. Um, and auditing services, we had two thousand dollars appropriated there, but we won't be audited this year, so I removed that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, what page am I looking at? The front page, the first page of um, appropriations. Yeah, appropriations, uh, the general fund, first page. Um, so uh, what you probably have there it says two thousand dollars for tax collection fees, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, I removed that completely. Um, I mean, that was for audit service. For tax collection fees, I added an extra $200 just because we, um, they're higher because than what we normally appropriate because um, we're getting a little more money. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, but, then go I'm, down. I'm not, I'm still not. Oh, final appropriation column, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I'm only serving. Now, now, now I'm following. Okay, mm -hmm. so then, um, on, make sure I'm telling you the right story here. Um, yes, please. Um, let's see, tax collection. Yes, I did. Okay, and then go down to advertising. Mm -hmm. And you go across there, and we have. Um, uh, oh, wait a minute. No, okay, no, I'm sorry. Go down to contracted services, just below advertising. Got it. Um, the I think you, what you see is ten thousand four hundred forty dollars. Do you see that number? I see twelve five. 
That's because I jumped to the I bounced up by two thousand dollars, two thousand one hundred because we spent um, about that much money um, redoing our website. I see. So that's a contracted service as far as I was concerned, and that's why I added uh, these contracted services otherwise pays for like our UAN um, right. stuff and all kinds of other things. Okay. Anyway, um, right. and then just below that under our property insurance. Um, I had to add six hundred and forty-six dollars to our six thousand was there because we need that much more just to pay our property tax, our property insurance for this year. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then you can move down all the way down. Um, Take a breath. Every, yeah. Everything. Everything is as um, um, Chris had suggested that was on that piece of paper. Except you get down to contracted services in. Uh, oh no! Take that back. Um, Hold on just one second here. I added a hundred dollars to oh, insurance and bonding. Wait a minute. Um, that's no, let's see. What did I oh, wait? Maybe, let me just make sure. I'm, I'm not okay. Scratch that. Just turn the page. <laughs> scratch that. Yeah, and then in buildings, um, the buildings line item uh, that was suggested to go to zero, and I put five hundred in there because we'd already spent some money. Oh, that's a good idea. And um, you know this building isn't gonna. Well, well, who knows, right? So anyway, that's that. Um, that's all. I, that's all the changes I made in the general fund. So I just wanted to let you know why. Um, the other place. Then if you want to move to gas tax, um, that'd be page three on your appropriations page. Okay, just to just to keep us mm -hmm. straight, your final appropriations one hundred and forty thousand seven seventy five in the general, and our and our. Final budget for that is one fifty three oh six. So we're within a good a good place. Hold on, hold on. No, our final appropriations is one forty. Yeah. 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 In general. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Okay. So then um, down in the gas tax fund. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, hold on. Okay, I got to turn the page two since we that. Okay. Um, <laughs> just in. Um, other insurance down near the bottom. Mm -hmm. I had to spend some money there, so I spent sixty dollars ninety six cents. So I just put seventy in there just for for fun. All right, that's the only change I made in uh, gas tax. Okay. okay. Then we can move to um, the cemetery fund twenty forty two. I doubled. Our advertising dollar because of the postcards. Okay. Okay. So from one thousand went to two thousand. Well. Okay. I well, wait, because look, we yeah we. Spent, I forgot we would pay. We didn't pay that till this year. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we need to pay it till yeah. And so. Um, all right. Then, um, last but not least, go to fire, please. And uh, we go. The biggest change I made was um, in the. Uh, on the second page of the fire fund, the Ohio Peace of Fire Pension Fund, mm -hmm. and um, <coughs> oh, somehow I got up to ninety thousand last year, uh, and then um, Colin suggested well, they, these changes were based on him. He had suggested um, to keep it at that um, dollar amount, but then I did I did my own calculations again, and um, I don't think we're going to need that much money at all, and. Um, and so I, yeah, I, I didn't think we were going to either, but no, I wasn't going to. No, no. Well, I don't, and honestly, I, I has to been my bad somehow. I, I must, I don't know what I did, but I was way over um, appropriated last year. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did my calculations again on what, what basically this line item reflects what the employer pays into OPNA, not the total, um, you know, employee right. and employer. And that might have been where I, yep. knew. anyway, so 65,000 should, is what I suggested for now. It's. A bit more than what I think we're going to need, but just to be on the safe side. So that's what I changed. Okay, you had it at 50,000, 50, I think, Chris, but I put it at 65 in there because okay. that's, my, that's my best guesses. Okay. And then the only other change I made um, is uh, again at the property insurance line item. We had 8,200 in there. Um, you had, we were keeping it at that, but I needed an extra 1,769, so it's at 9,969. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, that is it, okay. except for in the EMS call suggested that um, for operating supplies you want to um, 
he wanted to, uh, you had said 56,000, he said 65, so I basically, it's because of they, they're buying their meds, the meds with that, yeah. they weren't doing last year. Yeah. So that's a 65. Okay, so that's why it's where it's at. Okay? That's all the changes I made. And I can run over that kind of quick, and I'd be happy to review if anybody needs me to say it again slower. <laughs> but I'm still right. No, I'll just kidding. Move. No. <laughs> uh, uh, adoption of this resolution to make the end of your appropriation. And I will second it. Any further discussion regarding that motion? Hearing none. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay, I will submit that to the county auditor. Well, I budgeted a whole chunk of time for a lengthy discussion. Well, well if you want to. Well, we've had a couple say. brief ones, I think, for the add up. Well, well, what do you want to yeah. say? Well, no, not for me. I thought there were going to be some <laughs> questions from other board members. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, yeah, well. If he wants to say anything, I'm not asking any questions. Got her. It's been moved and second. Okay. Um, it's been my belief that you know what you're doing. <laughs> Good job, Mark. <laughs> that's why I vote for you. Boy, that's what he likes to say. So really come in handy. <laughs> oh, well, and then, uh, you know, and on the on the fun side of things, um, if you may have looked at, you may look at your um, uh, revenue status mm -hmm. report, you might see that um, we uh, have received a chunk of our first our first settlement of our property taxes. Yeah. So we got some you know, a nice chunk of change and thrown into the bank. And the inside millage accounts uh, came in above the uh, budgeted amount. Yep. So. Um, we're, you know, um, that, that cash is going to get transferred to a, a, an investment fund. You know, a chunk of it. We don't need all, all that in our, in our checking account. So that's it. Yeah. If you want to draw this out, I could start <laughs> making up things. You know, no, you what you want to do? You know, what you're, you know what you're putting off on. <laughs> I already said this at the beginning of the meeting. No mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, we both got our haircuts this week, so we feel like we're very professional. <laughs> right. You, mean, you want to work a little bit harder? Yeah. Little bit harder. Uh, okay, so I don't have anything else to report. Right? Okay, well, thank you very much. Yeah, sure. um, we, there does appear to be a resolution 2019-10 adoption of... Oh, well, then there's that. All right, can we? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we haven't voted yet. <laughs> I guess we could. I guess that motion was adopting the budget, but I guess now we need to do the appropriation. I mean, the, the um, resolution, right? That's what I thought we were just doing. That's what I was thinking we were doing. But we better do it for the camera's sake. We should probably go ahead and adopt the resolution now. <laughs> okay. I would. Uh, <sighs> resolution. <clears throat> Entertain the motion. Did, did we vote on the last one, though? I just want to make sure. Yeah, we did. I wrote okay. unanimous on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we uh, I'm going to take a motion then for the adoption of Resolution 2019-10. Uh, adoption of permanent appropriation for year 2019. I will so move. Mr. Hollister moves. Is there a second? I will second. Mr. Croft seconds. Is there any further discussion regarding that resolution, that motion to approve the resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Okay. Well, there we go. There we go. All right. Uh, nothing zoning this period. I did change the website to reflect the zoning changes of last meeting. Uh, I removed the R2 and R3 sections and, and cleaned up the PUD for the industrial and business portion, so that's a, um, if sometime you want to give me your stick, I will do that. I can, I can cut and paste 
those parts onto the, the website. Okay. I don't have it with me, but I will. Just on the desk tomorrow. Sometime. Well, and those, um, the changes that have been made do need to be um, submitted to the county recorder's office. Um, and, yep. and I think we have yeah, to send a little check along with that. So mm -hmm. when you're ready to do that, let me know and I'll cut a check. I think it's 20 bucks. Anyway. Okay. Um, so, standing committee reports. Uh, month in BRPC meetings, there were uh, elections of officers, oh, I was officially elected second uh, vice chair, uh, there is a new, uh, or excuse me, first vice chair, there's a new second vice chair as the commissioner of uh, Miami uh, County, and the uh, chair is John Beals, who, that's who, he was the interim up until then. Um, we adopted some uh, bylaw changes to uh, allow for participation from Warren County on the executive committee uh, because they hadn't had that they hadn't had that pleasure uh, previously. Uh, we adopted adopted a recommendation a resolution uh, supporting Governor Dewine's increase of the Ohio Motor Vehicle Fuel Tax um, in his original you know in his original request uh, because of course it's not done yet and we don't know how it's going to go through the Senate and what changes might be made, either more or less or who knows what, but we made the resolution uh, the way it stood originally. And the rest of things were transportation and that's not all. And of course we want to recognize the executive director's loss of his wife. Okay, so um, next was the regional planning meeting for last month. Uh, uh, it was uh, very... It is very the Green County Regional Planning. Green County kind of Regional Planning. Uh, there's a, a, a policy that we had been working on to require, yeah, not require because we can't require anything, but to put in our policy that recommended townships to require a second access uh, in political in in uh, political subdivisions in subdivisions of more than thirty uh, home sites. Um, up till now, uh, developers were requesting uh, variances on that. Uh, or putting in uh, emergency you know, emergency accesses, and um, it was the decision of the board from our recommendation, the full board, uh, to ask those uh, townships, uh, and citizens, to require a true second uh, entrance and exit for a subdivision that large. <coughs> So, and I think that was also where cul-de-sacs, that a lot of people were putting in long cul-de-sacs that were over the 700 foot maximum that we had as a policy, uh, and then requesting a variance for that, and having an emergency access as being the reason that you know, it would be all right to have the longer cul-de-sac uh, used. But we just thought that was uh, not the best way to do that. So. That was, that was passed by the board, and then there was a lot of talk about the 2020 census preparation coming up and the pre-planning session that happened uh, where the report was given about the comprehensive plan for the county that's being uh, re revised and renovated and updated. Uh, the next meeting, next Tuesday, now there's an executive meeting Tomorrow, but then the full board meeting will be next Tuesday, and there'll be a, a substantial discussion about the, the role of uh, regional planning in the revised comprehensive plan, a timeline, financial the cost, that sort of thing. We'll be having everybody's favorite visiting visioning uh, meetings throughout the throughout the county. Uh, Yellow Springs and my attachments will have 
lots of charrettes, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> just like the last vision of the thing. So that's what happened there. Um, the middle spine was in there the other day. Uh, oh, I forgot to tell Colin, I installed the required CO2 detectors. Uh, or, no, not CO2, CO, no, CO detectors on both floors. So we are now in compliance with a new fire code. I'll have to send him a memo on that so he knows to check that out. OK, so um, the TAC meeting, did that happen last month? I can't uh, yes, I actually talked, mentioned it last. Oh, OK. Uh, the main thing was uh, reviewing the proposed uh, user fee attached to gasoline purchase. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's, so I'm echoing what you just referred to. We didn't take a position, we just urged members to communicate with their legislators. And I just I know that the legislature is not doing what the governor urged. Mm -hmm. We're not going as far as governor urged. Mm -hmm. We did have a nice presentation by the new Ohio uh, Department of Transportation Director, uh, Jack Marks Banks, uh, at our oh, at the county uh, meeting last right. week. How do you spell his name? March Banks. Jack March Banks. Hey. March yeah. Banks. Yeah. He, he gave a lot of good information up front. And then this coming month's, or this month's TAC is in. Uh, Center board schedule of meetings. What's our next? Well, I actually um, was just thinking to get a, uh, the board together because of the you know the requests. Or uh, last year, the Clifton board did contribute to the quantum annual maintenance fee. They did a third of that. Clifton Cemetery did, and this year the fee has increased. And so, rather than automatically doing that, I felt that the, the cemetery board should at least be, you know, consulted about that. Um, and um, I did get a phone call today from um, one of the board members. She's currently in the hospital with pneumonia, so I wasn't going to try and set up a meeting with her. But I have I've had it on my mind to get, it's, it basically it seems to be on me to get these guys together. So, and definitely before spring planting takes the, all the time of, uh, one of the board members. So, are we current with all the maintenance charges from last year? I have not. We have not gotten an invoice yet for that. Have you been that? Uh uh. Okay. We'll do. Honey do list. Yeah, we just got that. I know. I don't think we do that because we would be we'd be fighting about it by now. Yeah. <laughs> there would be some conversation about it by now, I should say. Yes, there would. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure there would be. So, um, I know. Ball there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So. So. So that. So that's Don's report. <laughs> <laughs> that's Don's report. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Don's uh, social secretary. Uh huh. Um. Okay. So, Mark, anything on the going on in the senior center or the projects of that you work on um, uh, ESC work? Yeah, the, um, let's see, on the senior, I received a nice thank you card on the senior um, project for the apartment buildings mm -hmm. for uh, speaking out in favor of the, uh, in support of and then, as far as the McKee group goes, I've been, uh, I've got a call into 
Mr. Smith at the at the high school mm -hmm. about the um, the overall process because um, I'm not really familiar with the step by step. I've got um, all of the the guidelines, but I was at Friends Care. I was thinking about that the uh, last May, and, uh, when it was approved. Remind me, what was approved and what's David Smith's role and okay. what's the McKee Group uh, role? The, the, the McKee Group does a um, um, scholarship, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. McKee, um, no. I'm sorry, Smith at the high school um, receives all of the information and disseminates it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the group decides um, who wins. Well, strictly speaking, this is in senior center, though. Yeah. This is separate from. Yeah. So, that's another there's, project. There's not, a, there's not a tidy little bow that you're going to wrap all this up into no. township business? <laughs> okay, I was, um, waiting, I was waiting for that one. No, the, um, as far as township business goes, um, I think it's an important, it's, it's not a huge amount, it's $1,500 this year. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, it's an important uh, award. I, I think that um, as far as the health and well-being of the village goes, that the township is closely tied to them. Um, and the more we participate, the better it is. of the uh, Economic Sustainability Committee work? Um, no, they held a meeting and I've got a couple of phone calls in, um, but I haven't heard, hmm. heard back. You, you attended the meeting or it was held? No, it was held. Uh -huh. um, and I called um, Karen and left a message, and she hasn't called me back yet. Mm -hmm. okay. So, all right, thank you. All right, uh, any new business this evening? Any old business? Well, there is the C D I C. Formation group meeting that happened. Uh, oh, it's Y S C D I C <laughs> C D. It's not I because it's a D, so there's got to be. You're a talking about Community Improvement Corporation, calling itself Community Development Corporation. Yeah, the Yellow Springs Community <laughs> Development Corporation. Um, Remember, this is being video. I know. I'm trying to get it straight for the viewing audience. Um, <coughs> we had our set of, second meeting last week, um, <coughs> determined to work, prioritize to work on a, st at, on a set of bylaws uh, for the uh, committee because you need to have those in place uh, in order to start uh, applying for 501c3 status, which is obviously paramount to, to begin accepting uh, uh, money. money and loaning money uh, or property or virtually anything else that a DCIC does. A DCDC does. Don't get it right yet. And so uh, <laughs> that, that work is ongoing. There is a set meeting schedule. It's the first um, Monday of every month 
noon, noon to 1.30. Uh, organizational meetings anyway, not, I'm sure not whatever the regular meetings are. Um, and uh, another set, of, I'm, I'm trying to work out some uh, progress on the, on the bylaws along with Patty Bates and um, Krieger uh, of the Village Council, and then we'll, then we'll start working collaboratively on the 501c3 application. Um, we need to find the most appropriate way to go about that, whether to try and do it ourselves or to get a facilitator for 501c3s because they can be cumbersome. I remember doing it for the Grinnell Mill uh, Foundation, and it was <coughs> above my pay grade, and so we hired a an operation that professionally applied for 501c3s and it was obviously successful because we were in business um, doing it. So that's yet to be done after we get some of these uh, some of these bylaws put together and I will get them for you uh, to review. And that's all. Hmm. Are you talking about the loan fund? That will be part of it. the DCID, DC, DC <laughs> will be, at this point, they're supposed to be charged with the responsibility of overseeing that and, and, and making those loans and determining, mm -hmm. uh, you know, taking contributions towards them and, and then distributing the money. But of course, right this minute, it's, that's a goal. But that is one thing. And uh, again, this is way early, but you know, bringing it around to townships, in theory, instead of selling this building at a public auction or a sealed bid, mm -hmm. we could sell it to the CDIC at a predetermined value that we, that we wanted mm -hmm. and, and an agreed value. Uh, and then we could put um, requirements as to how it's resold, um, what purpose it might be resold uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How stringent those requirements are, I have no idea at this point. That's you know, that's so far down the road. But it does give us an option that you know we don't have to sell it at the highest bid for. Our you know, the Bill Springs Strip Club or something that we don't feel is... That was exactly what I was thinking about. <laughs> See, there you go. Great minds think alike. There's the downside as much as, you know, unless you can put in the... Mm. Unless you can put in... You know, you could... I don't know. You, you know, if you sell it for the highest bidder or an auction, you never know. You might get a lot of money. Person that I am, mm -hmm. and so if we, you know, sold it for a million dollars, and it was, you know, might have come in at a million five, then we didn't get that five hundred thousand, and because we'd never know how much you didn't get because it wouldn't go to the auction because it would be transferred to the YSCDEC. <laughs> so I don't know. Again, we're a ways off on that, as we all know. Uh, it will give us an option other than an auction. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and it could be structured in a way that we, we got a share of any future profit mm -hmm. above the original price. Mm -hmm. So that's that's something to look forward to. All right. Anything else before the board say no? I've got a couple little notes here. Let's see what I miss. I think we thought never miss. That's a good thing. DCID. Uh, wanted to remind everybody that our new website is up and running and has uh, a lot of good current information on it. I know we've mentioned it before, but I think it's worth mentioning again. It also makes it very easy, it's right on the front page, to uh, do burial searches of all the township cemeteries for, uh, for decedents, for people who are buried in them. So uh, we'll take uh, advantage of that feature. 
I, I think it's a great new generation website. Good. It just goes MiamiTownship.net. Is that how you do it? MiamiTownship.net. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that plug. <laughs> Spell township all the way out or just? Huh? Yeah, okay. all, one, all one word. All one word. Out. It's a picture of me. It's all a picture of me. Uh, I, I, we should have a band. It does that to One me. other item. Uh, just that that tomorrow yeah, night, <laughs> the county commission has a town hall meeting at Antioch yeah. University Midwest. I believe it's 7 o'clock. Could be wrong. I'm glad you mentioned that. Unfortunately, this will not air by then, but still at all for us, it's yeah. good to know. I have a, I have a DAC meeting tomorrow night, but I, or else I would have gone. Well, my, actually, it may be 6.30. I'll, I'll, plan to, I'll check that out and send you, Mark will send you an email in case you want to go. Okay, yeah, I do. All right, hearing nothing else, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move. I'll second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Thank you. So, not tomorrow, but the next day.